right so welcome to the third podcast on ok and on of medicine and um, you know many people ask me how do you do it <laughs> i do it because because i like doing it and because because i enjoy it the day i feel that i don't you know man nahi hai or i don't feel like doing it i will just stop it i will just say tata bye bye khatam the end no problem so i absolutely enjoy exploring organ on at this point of my life because um in this world of so called advanced theories there are very few people who are going to the past and trying to you know go in depth <clears throat> that's what i attempt to do here and i hope all of you are joining me in studying uh, organ on let's do it play in german boys and girls so let's come to the eighth aphorism we already did um the eighth aphorism but before we uh, go to the eighth aphorism i think i missed telling you the footnote number 4 to the seventh aphorism and i'm going to go by it and this this is the aphorism number 7 that we spoke about um, in the last podcast i don't know when you heard it in the morning yesterday and that is mainly about the totality of symptoms and um, the fact that it is only by the removal of this symptoms he writes the only thing the physician has to take note of in every case of disease is to remove by means of his art in order that disease shall be cured and transformed into health this outwardly reflected picture of internal essence of the disease and then um at some point he writes the footnote number 4 the footnote number 4 is um written here so i'm going to uh, read it again uh, aphorism 7 the totality of these symptoms of this outwardly reflected picture of internal essence of the disease that is of affection of vital force must be principal or soul means whereby disease can make known what remedy it requires the only thing that can determine the choice of the most appropriate remedy and thus in a word totality of symptom must be principal and next to totality he writes the footnote 4 which which i'm going to read so totality of symptom must be the principal indeed the only thing the physician has to take note in every case of disease and to remove by means of his art in order that disease shall be cured and transformed to him footnote 4 he writes in all times the old physician school not knowing how else to give relief have sought to combat and if possible suppress by medicines here and there a single symptom by among a number of disease a one sided procedure which under the name of symptomatic treatment has justly excited universal contempt uh contempt because by it not only was nothing gained but much harm was inflicted a single one of the symptom present is no more than the disease itself than a single foot is to the man this procedure was so much the more reprehensible that such a single symptom was only treated by antagonistic remedy therefore only in an enantiopathic and palliative manner whereby after a slight elevation it was subsequently only rend- rendered all the worse is an interesting footnote he writes that the old physician school here he mainly speaks about the uh, modern medicine he speaks that you know when there are many many symptoms in a case and you try to remove only one symptom okay for example a case of eczema and, and there are you know you try to probably remove that part by steroids or something like that maybe there is a temporary elevation but at some point it's going to get worse and you are going to get some symptoms again so to f- to to really help a patient a totality of symptoms is required and very often the fundamental cause the deep kind of uh, state of the patient we have to look at to to remove the totality of symptoms that only is the only 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 pointer for us in treatment very interesting aphorism read footnotes number 4 which is so interesting so let's come to the eighth aphorism so the aphorisms you know <clears throat> is very interesting because the first 70 aphorisms are slightly theoretical here yeah. and especially aphorism 8 to 18 are are mainly about 
vital force, disease, health, immune system basically. So I'm going to breeze through it and, and point out important parts of it. I hope that you are connected to me in this uh, kind of uh, journey of uh, trying to study homeopathy. Let's study. It is conceivable, aphorism number 8, it is conceivable nor can it be proved by any experience in the world that after removal of all the symptoms of the disease and of entire collection of the perceptible phenomenon, there should or could remain anything else beside health that the morbid alteration in interior could remain uneradicated. Footnote 7. Let's, let's go by it again. It is not conceivable nor can it be proved by any experience in the world that after removal of all symptoms of the disease of entire collection of perceptible phenomena there should and could remain anything else beside in health or that morbid alteration into, into in the interior could remove uneradicated. Which means basically again we are we are kind of you know talking of corollary of, of the, the seventh aphorism about the totality of symptoms. Here he again talks about how um, basically if you remove the perceptible phenomena, the totality of symptoms, there actually wouldn't remain anything else to be removed. So if you can focus there, that is what it is. He writes footnote 5, Master Hanuman, he writes, when a patient has been cured of his disease by a true physician. So this is one of the first places he writes true physician. Interesting, no? True physician. Interesting. True physician in such a manner that no trace of the disease, no morbid symptom remain and all signs of health have permanently returned. How can anyone without offering an insult to common sense affirm in such an individual the whole bodily disease still remain in interior? And yet the chief of old school, Hifflind, asserts the following words, homeopathy can remove symptom but disease remain. This he maintains purely, partly by mortification at progress made by homeopathy to the benefit of mankind and partly because he still holds thoroughly material notions uh, respecting disease which is still unable to regard a state of being of organism where, wherein it is dynamically altered by morbidly deranged vital force as an altered state of health. But he views the disease as something material which after the cure is completed may still remain lurking in some corner of in the interior body in order. Someday during the most vigorous health to burst forth in its pleasure with its material present. So dreadful is the still the blindness of old pathology. No wonder that it could only produce symptoms, systems of therapeutic which is solely occupied with scouring out the poor patient. So, so very interesting. <clears throat> he writes, he writes that, and this is where he is kind of differentiating the modern medicine with allopathy, with the homeopathy. Because you know, in, uh, in modern medicine or I would say old school physician. Let's let's use the word old school physician instead of modern medicine or allopathy. Okay, so in old school physicians, um, they look at disease only as end products and uh, only as pathology. And you know they used to talk just like in today's world. You know everyone say, "Acha, you know maybe your symptoms will reduce, but the disease remains if homeopathy you take." But that's what he tries to explain that. Maybe many people say like that because they really cannot believe that homeopathy can really go to the depth and reverse the disease. That's what that's what he tries to say. And the fact that you know the whole whole um, kind of uh, phenomena of disease. You know what is disease? What is health? According to the old school physicians and homeopathy, so different, so very very different. Mm -hmm. So this is um, where we now talk about the aphorism 9 to 17 and this is the main idea here is mm -hmm. about uh, vital force and what is health and what is disease as, as Hanuman says in his own world. Beautiful you know the way he explains this aphorism and I remember in college days you know we used to all by heart this aphorism like a ratto fight but if you ask me now I don't remember a single word of it but I know the main concept 
and that's why I feel that it's important to understand concepts, and um, it can kind of you know help you really go in depth in homeopathy. Aphorism nine. In the healthy condition of man, the spiritual vital force, autocracy, the dynamis that animates the material body, organism, rules with unbounded sway, and retains all parts of organism in admirable, harmonious, vital operation, as regards both sensation and functions, so that our indwelling reason-gifted mind can freely employ this living, healthy instrument for higher purposes or excellence. And this is. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it it will probably take you a, a lifetime to really understand this aphorism, if you really kind of uh, understand it. For this, you know, probably as a homeopath, gradually you also have to be a little bit more spiritually inclined. You have to understand that life is not only about facts. They are also about feelings, about experiences, about spirit, about something beyond the material world. थोड़ा स्पिरिचुअल होना पड़ेगा लाइफ में या तो आपको जिंदगी सिखा देगी सो एनी वेज ही सेज दैट इन हेल्दी कंडीशन ऑफ मैन द स्पिरिचुअल वाइटल फोर्स द डायनामिक्स दैट एनिमेट्स द मटीरियल बॉडी रूल्स विद अनबाउंडेड स्वे रिटेन्स ऑल पार्ट ऑफ ऑर्गेनिज्म एडमायरेबल हारमोनियस वाइटल प्रिंसिपल ऑपरेशन as regards both sensation and function so that our indwelling reason gifted mind can freely employ this living healthy instrument for higher purposes of our existence what this means is that when what is health you know health is where the body's immune system psycho neuro endocrine immune system this is something called as pnei junction okay it's a kind of a pnei axis of the body you know which is like a psycho neuro endocrino immunological axis probably when when master hanuman spoke about uh, vital force he's trying to talk about this pnei okay and he says that in in a healthy condition of man the pnei is working in such a way that you don't even remember anything or you don't even have any problem because it works so beautifully all the sensation all the functions are perfect however how do you know that it is kind of the sensations and the kind of uh, functions are perfect so that so that our indwelling indwelling thinking reason gifted you know always always we try to find the reason of things can freely employ this living healthy instrument now first time master hanuman speaks about how we as humans are basically instruments of something beyond um uh, beyond what what our selfish gains can be isn't it so indwelling reason gifted mind can freely employ this living healthy instrument for the higher purposes of existence this is the thing health is where you can think beyond yourself higher purposes of existence our pur- our purpose is not only for only to make money or to make a great physique or to eat some amazing food or just you know have drugs or have sex or whatever higher purposes of existence what is higher purpose of existence and i genuinely do not know what is higher purpose of existence because to each it's quite different but probably 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 higher purposes of existence is where you are able to think beyond yourself um where you are able to think beyond yourself and you are able to do something by which you are able to touch someone else's heart or by which you are able to help someone beyond yourself as well so that is probably higher purpose of existence that is when you can say this man this women is now kind of um, really in a in absolute health how to know a person is in absolute health this and you are kind of in a higher purpose of existence are working out for you so interesting no absolutely phenomenal if for some 10 let's come here the material organism without vital force 
is capable of no sensation, no function, no self-preservation. It derives all sensation, perform all the function of life solely by means of immaterial being, the vital principle, which animates the material organism in health and in disease. Basically, again, we are here kind of uh, talking about the body's immune system, the psycho-neuro-endocrino immune system, where the whole body's function, you know, your hand, feet, your liver, your kidney, your heart, your lung, your brain, you know, all these are actually for formulating the whole force behind it is quite dynamic. It's a psycho neuroendocrine system. So without that, what is the whole body? It's basically chemical constituents, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen. That's what it is. So it's this psycho neuroendocrine system, immunological system, which is actually the main driving force. Interesting, no? This is what, you know, in the next few aphorism, Master Hahnemann speaks about that the importance of psycho neuro endocrino immunosystem. Then he writes, very interestingly, When a person falls ill, it is only this spiritual self-acting, automatic vital force, everywhere present in his organism that is primarily deranged by dynamic influence upon it of morbific agent inimical to life. It is only the vital principle dealing to such abnormal state that can furnish the organism with its disagreeable sensation and incline it to irregular processes which we call disease for a power invisible in itself and also cognizable by its effect on organisms. Its morbid derangement only make itself known by manifestation of disease in sensation and functions of those parts of the organism exposed to senses of observers, physician, that is by morbid symptoms, in no other way can make itself known. Footnote 7. This is very, you know, you have to really understand it step by step. If organism is done. Again, uh, probably in this aphorism 11, Master Hanuman is talking again about vital principle in disease. What is he talking about? He is again talking about, again about dynamic influence. He is again talking about immune system. He is again talking about psycho neuro and uh, endocrine immunological system. He says that when a person actually falls sick, it is only this kind of, you know, somewhere down the line at a deeper level this psycho neuro immunological endocrinological axis the influence of this on the body parts is kind of deranged somewhere and it, it causes irregular symptoms functions of the body and we can only know what is actually wrong by morbid symptoms morbid symptoms can be known to the observer to the patient himself and the physician so the only way out is is to understand this morbid of symptoms. The only way out is to take the totality of symptoms and to find a deeper remedy based on the fundamental cause, based on aphorism 5 that we spoke about. And then there is a footnote 7 where he speaks about what is dynamic power, what is dynamic influence. And he's, he, he, he kind of explains different, 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 different examples about how the every most of the diseases are probably dynamic in origin he gives an um, different different examples here interesting he gives example of earth satellite how the moon revolves in and around earth he gives example of how bar attract um, pieces of iron towards it there is something inside it but we cannot really call it uh, something material so on that basically he talks about how there is a dynamic action of disease this is very important if there is something more deeper more dynamic that dynamic influences this is what we need to understand this is what he talks about and he also says that if you want to understand this aphorism, read it along with 33rd aphorism 148 and 279, which we will do. Mm -hmm. 
I hope you are able to kind of really um, understand <laughs> this this crazy, crazy, crazy journey that we have taken to understand organon. Life is a game, my friends. Life is a game. It's not about what you get, but it's more about what you do with what you get. So that's about it for me today. I hope this was interesting for you. I hope you learned something. And uh, we will meet again for the next Organon podcast. See you later.